I want to try something really quick. Oh, is this real life size? <laughs> All right. When you hear the words design system, what images come to mind? For me, I envision in my mind's eye a uh, beautiful website floating softly on a neutral background. And in that website is a, an assortment of beautifully crafted components, each of them carefully tested, uh, accessible, of course. And uh, I imagine that they are all uh, built by a team of extremely elite designers who are also very attractive. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think about websites that look like this, softly floating. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I imagine the team behind it looks like this. <laughs> These are real photos. Um, you know, around this time, I start to ask myself, wait, I'm on a design system, systems team. Uh, you know, do we look this attractive too? <laughs> My wife thinks so. Anyway, most of the design systems that we hear about today, uh, they're mature enough, they're comprehensive enough to have a public face. You know, like uh, Atlassian's here or material design, and they feel extremely authoritative, don't they? At least they do to me. But my question today is, what about the design systems that don't really exist yet, that are just starting out? Where do you get the authority to call your work a design system when nobody's really using it yet? And so the answer, of course, is what I want to talk to you guys about today. And ultimately, it is about faking it. Uh, it's about embracing that inner imposter inside of all of us. That, I, when I wrote that, that was like much more funny, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did at Dropbox about a year ago. We embraced our inner, inner imposter and we got our Dropbox design system off the ground. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what are some of the things that we did uh, to embrace that inner imposter and to accelerate our design system off that ground. So let's start with casting the villain. Let's just jump right in. Everybody loves a good villain, right? What's your favorite villain? Just someone shout out their favorite villain. Killmonger. Killmonger, yeah, the Joker. My favorite villain is the Shredder, right? He's got like sharp shoulder pads. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, <laughs> let me bring it right, back, right, right on back. Uh, when I say a villain in this case, in the case of design systems, what do I mean? A villain is a well-framed and a well-named problem. And uh, in the case of design systems, thankfully, the villains that stand in the way, uh, which are, I guess, solved by, by design systems, are fairly well understood or fairly clear. Um, and you can use different words for this, but the villains, to me, uh, the way that I put them are uh, inefficiency, insecurity, and um, inconsistency. You can probably throw maintainability in there as well. Uh, I, par I kind of make that part of inefficiency, but those are the villains generally, right? And so to start, we made sure that our leads and um, you know, our leadership generally understood that these villains existed at our company. And we tried to make them, uh, make the evils of these villains very evident to them by writing a problem statement for them. You know, we call them P1s at Dropbox, but you may call it something else at your company. Um, but we wanted them to understand that these villains exist and we should really crush them uh, by, by bringing in some hero, right? And so let me give you an example of some of the, the uh, illustrations that we gave in this problem statement to clarify what these villains were. So let's talk about inefficiency. Inefficiency is ultimately about designing the same things again and again right? Maybe a button, maybe a drop down, maybe a snack bar, and designer A designs it once, designer B redesigns it a different way, and eventually you just design it a million times, and that's pretty inefficient. You can think about this out of engineering perspective as well, where you have to build the same thing again and again, um, and you're, you're not reusing any code. 
So here's an example of, of a fabricator task at Dropbox. Uh, fabricator is our equivalent of uh, GitHub slash Jira. And um, basically what this fabricator task says is that this engineer has spent you know, a fairly long time building a table cell, okay? Uh, and then they spent another week kind of getting that table cell CSS to match up with another table cell that was already built. Now, if you, if you use Dropbox on the web, you know that there's a ton of table cells on Dropbox, right? Whether that's a file, whether that's a member, whether that's a file request, it's all in the form of a table cell. And so there are many instances of fabricator tasks just like this because we don't have any reusable, or at the time we didn't have any reusable code. And so without a design system of reusable components, uh, the time it takes to make changes like this, uh, it's just, it just seems foolish. And, um, and if, for example, tomorrow we wanted to change table cells, you know, that's a lot of time, right? Uh, doing each instance of a table cell again and again. That's inefficiency. What about insecurity? Well, we actually interviewed our designers about what was problematic in their workflow. And they told us that they lacked confidence when they were designing. Um, they didn't know what the best practices were. And if what they were doing was actually already proven to not work. Uh, and so instead of growing in confidence as they spent time at Dropbox being a designer, there was always this nagging sense of insecurity as to what is the thing that I ought to be doing. An example of this is a modal. Sometimes a modal has a, cl a close X. Sometimes it has a cancel button. What am I supposed to do? It, it becomes very un unobvious. Um, similarly, sometimes the primary action on a modal is to the left. Sometimes it's to the right. Uh, do you guys know what the right answer is? <laughs> Whatever's right for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's insecurity. Uh, inconsistency. You guys are designers. I'm a designer. I feel like insecure or I inconsistency or the hatred of inconsistency runs thick in our blood. So I don't really have to explain it to you guys. But uh, for everyone else, it's best to show that uh, real users are losing confidence in your product because your interface is increasingly unpredictable, right? You gotta learn how to do the same things in different ways again and again. Here's an example I gave for that. Um, these are all the different things that we use for onboarding. And I find this particularly ironic that you are not only having to learn different UI again and again, but you are having to learn how to learn <laughs> different UI again and again. And so, that's uh, inconsistency for you. And so know your villains, and that's where we really begin. And uh, get your leadership to recognize them through examples. And remember, a good villain, just like Shredder, just like Joker, or Ursula, somebody said, uh, shows the necessity of a hero, right? And uh, in, the, in our case, these villains show the necessity of a design system. And it's your job to show them that. Okay, but here's the thing. If you don't have something real to point to, when I say real to point to, I mean something like a design system that's already made. If you don't have something real to point to, it can be very difficult to speak authoritatively about it. And that's where research comes in. Um, thankfully, a lot of teams like uh, Sp uh, Shopify and, and uh, Salesforce, they've already built these incredible design systems. And um, what you can do is by researching what they've done, you can essentially borrow their authority. And uh, that, their stories are what give you credibility. And so before I even floated the idea of a design system at Dropbox, I talked to a number of folks. Um, talked to some people from, let's see, uh, that's Stanley, that's Spotify, uh, Facebook, Airbnb, and that egg-like thing is uh, Dave Bedingfield at Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Um, so I talked to a bunch of folks about their design systems teams, and they were much further along than we were, of course. And I asked them, you know, what was their team like? How did they balance creativity and consistency? Uh, what was working, what didn't work? And then I was left with a document, which you can see here, um, called Design Systems, a review, kind of like Hogwarts, a history. Uh, and it was full of insights of all these things I learned from them. And what it really enabled me to do was have authoritative answers when people had questions about design systems, especially leadership. I also talked to our own designers. 
Um, I interviewed them and pulled together insights on what their needs were and, um, and not just their needs, but what were their greatest hopes, right? What were their greatest fears? And it enab enabled me to speak on their behalf to leadership, to try to convince them that our designers also want this. And so all this research gave me the material that I needed to speak authoritatively about a, a something that didn't yet exist, right? I have no design system at this point, but I have the authority of all these other companies, which is extremely helpful. Okay, so you've got your villains, and you've got some borrowed authority. It's time to start making the thing. But how do you do that? Uh, and so this is what I say. I say you fake it while you make it. And that's pretty much what we did, and, and here's how. Here's a couple things that we did. One thing is you can hijack a project that you're working on. Uh, just simply by declaring that it's producing components for your design system. Um, and I just want to emphasize that it can be whatever project that you're working on, okay? Uh, for me, I think I was working on a increased sharing project and I somehow was able to spin it around to create a component that I was then going to see the design systems component library with. And as long as you can design something systematically, as long as you can think about the component that it generates, you can start uh, to take your project and turn it into a design systems project. So hijack the project that you're working on. Um, for us, we were at the tail of a pretty big redesign of Dropbox.com. Um, and bear in mind, while we were doing this, we didn't have a design systems team. There was no charter for design systems team to exist. And so what we did at this point uh, is we just pointed out that this new redesign was component oriented. It had a design systems in mind when we were thinking about it. And just from saying that we were design systems minded while we were making this um, redesign was enough to kind of take a first step towards showing that we were actually implementing a design system. That's faking it while making it. Here's another way of uh, faking it while making it. Oh yeah, this is actually the, um, the sharing project that I was mentioning about. Uh, this is on mobile. There was a sharing project and we decided to create this sort of hero header, is what we call it, on the top of, uh, on the, top of the screen. And we made that into a component and that became one of the first components in our design system for mobile. Uh, and I would actually say that we did a, something pretty interesting here which is we had uh, design specs that were written, and those design specs actually became the design system documentation um, by use of this fancy internal tooling that we have uh, with Dropbox Paper. Does anyone here use Dropbox Paper? Great, well you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets a car. <laughs> yes? Um, so, so this is actually a internal tool that we have that turns a set of Dropbox paper docs into a website. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right, which leads re leads me to the next thing, which is build a website. Uh, build a website, even if it is a simple static website. When our engineers were working on the redesign of Dropbox.com, uh, they started to ask for more complete specs of me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I decided, you know what, maybe it's better not to just hand them redline sketch files, but just like, code it up in HTML and CSS. And so I took a weekend and created this website. And you can see it's fairly simple. It's just one page with all the components on that one page. And I just want you to bear in mind, this is not production code, OK? Uh, this is very simple code. And um, the only thing is that the measurements were right. The markup was pretty acceptable. Um, and it just blew my mind because before I knew it, just because this thing lived behind a URL, uh, this website was being referenced by PMs in paper docs, in Slack channels, uh, on fabricator tasks, and, um, and all from just this static site. So that was a, a huge learning for us. It goes without saying that design systems also rise and fall based on how easy they are to use. And, um, and so what we did is we also created a sketch tool, a sketch file with all of our components on them. Um, and what we did one step further, which is one of our incredible designers, Phil LaPierre, created this ins install app, which you double click it and it will uh, sim link our sketch template 
from Dropbox to your Sketch application support library, and also install all your standard color palettes and your, uh, your fonts. And in other words, you double click that one thing and you have everything, um, which is pretty fantastic. Finally, let's talk about people. Um, believe it or not, even if you have no design system at your company, there are people at your company that want to use it. Uh, there are designers in your org that believe in it. Find them, <laughs> okay? Uh, because if you can get them to volunteer to try out just using the design system that you're making and maybe even contribute to it, then when you know, somebody comes uh, knocking on your door and asking you, hey, is this even a real thing? Or, or are you just like making stuff up? You, know, you can point to Bobby and say, hey, Bobby's using it, right? <laughs> That's Bobby right over there. <laughs> um, and that's what we did. We started a design systems uh, pilot program at Dropbox and asked a few designers to pitch in and try it out. And over time, the rest of the org just picked up on it. We didn't, kind of, we didn't have this formalization of using the design systems uh, components. People just wanted to use it. So let's skip forward to today. Uh, this is kind of what we have today. We have expanded the design systems uh, design team to three designers. Um, we've got Adam Knopfsinger is doing desktop, Zach Johnson is doing web, and I'm doing mobile. Um, and yes, I remember now, I'm supposed to plug this. We are looking for a design manager for design systems, so <laughs> that could be you. Um, our little humble static website that uh, was made over the weekend has become this much more beautiful one. Um, which Adam Knopfsinger has been pushing. Uh, we have uh, Sketch library support now, which is really fantastic. Um, and if anybody uses Abstract, that's also a tool that we've been uh, checking out. I think it's a great tool. Um, we also have uh, React components now that are linked to our guidelines and um, what's the other one? Storybook as well. So the future is bright, uh, things are great. Uh, and so I just wanted to wrap it all together for you guys and say, if you want to start up a design system, here's the plan. Number one, you cast strong villains so that you can drive urgency and necessity for your design system. Number two, research the role in order to borrow the authority of other people. Three, hijack an existing uh, project, use it to populate your design system. Uh, four, build a website even if it's a static website, it will do wonders to, to, to serve as a, a source of truth. And um, set up design tools, make it easy for your designers to pick it up. And finally, find people you can point to uh, to say that this is real. Um, and I recognize, I know, that the entire time you're gonna feel like a total imposter, right? But you know what, that's good. And uh, I, I feel like you should embrace that because if there's any hope of making something just appear out of nothing, um, you better be ready to put on a good show. So fake it while you make it. Good luck. <laughs>